Hey guys, Gregory Thomas here, everybody's favorite uncle. Back again with another painting I did um, a while back. This time we're going to showcase a piece of art that I did in an expressionist style. No, not expressionist, um, an impressionist style. And um, this painting in particular is called um, The Virgo or Vivis of Scotland. Now, as I mentioned in my first introductory video, that um, impressionism is a very, it's a very um, particular style. And so much of what it gets done, much of what it consists of is short brush strokes and accuracy of lighting. And it's just one of those paintings that if you don't do it um, the way that is written by the book or if you don't really get close to it, that actual impressionist may be like uh, it doesn't look all that it's not necessarily um as critical as the renaissance paintings but it's more so critical in the term where if you don't get it i don't know how to put it if you don't get it just right that it just doesn't look right um bob ross in my opinion um in my opinion he was an impressionist i know he paints much of what his paintings were of, of nature, whether they're mountains, mostly a bunch of trees. He uses what's common with an impressionist is that they use short brush strokes. So that's one thing that you got to keep in mind when you're trying to do or trying to mimic an impressionist painting is that you need to have short brush strokes. Now I'm going to take a look and show you one of my um, art pieces the Virgo and where I try to at least try to do um, a little bit of an impressionist style so that you can get a better handle of how it's done and again I'm not really personally sure if I did it right myself but hopefully I came close so here we go okay and so um, this is the Vivis of Scotland, the painting that I did a while back. I did this when I was um, still in high school. I went to a school in Georgia, um, I think it was a technical school, um, for an elective called Maxwell. Um, that's, that was a couple years ago. But um, anyway... With impressionist style, and forgive me for my hands shaking, um, I'm not using one of those, you know, selfie holder things. You know how it is. Uh, anyway, with impressionist style, you notice that the short brush strokes, and this is actually, I was trying to do a little bit of um, pointillism. Um, I'm not really the best at that, but I try to get a little bit of the uh, style myself. Um... What this would classify in as would be abstract impressionism, which I absolutely love. I love abstract impressionism in where basically the idea with abstract impressionism is you make a painting and you're not focusing on making it look realistic or making it look like a solid object that you made. It's almost like you painted it as if you um, only glanced at it for a moment. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, get into Impressionism. Or at least try to do some of my paintings in an Impressionist style. Is because I liked that dream-like look that um, Impressionists were able to get. Claudia Mon or Claude Monet. I'm not sure if I'm butchering his name or not. But I always call him Claudia Monet. He's considered one of the, the fathers, four founding fathers of Impressionism. I mean, this dude right here, this dude was, he was awesome. Everybody looked up to Claudia Monet as an example. I know Rembrandt was another um, really good impressionist. But what I was trying to do um, with my painting, the, the Virgo, and I'm not sure why I called it the Virgo. I just saw a lot of red, saw a lot of red, um, you know, use the colors in red in it and was like, you know what? It just looks like it's out of Zodiac. It might have been a Virgo. This is actually a painting I painted over. So when I painted over it, 
it didn't have all these extra dots and all these, you know, these, these, uh, little groovy, uh, bits here with, with the white paint that I had to use, that I used to try and get, um, an idea or a sense of, uh, lighting. I didn't really have any of that there, so I added it. Hold on. And... When I added it, I just liked how it was flowing, so I just used it. Um, another thing to know for Impressionists, if you're trying to do an Impressionist style, if you notice, there is no black paint that is used. Um, that means they don't... They like to focus on color and lighting. So they would, choose, they would use a color that, that mimics the color black but isn't black i'm not sure if we're gonna zoom in and see if i can get my thing to uh there we go and as you can see it's this eye pupil right here it's actually purple this is a dark blue um dark blue you can pick out any darkest color that you have here and it's not it's not black they're really um, keen on not using that color. They just don't want to use it. Me and my paintings, I like using black. Um, I just do. I mean, I'm telling you, even when I paint white people, uh, if I didn't use the color black somewhere, either in the outline or around the eyes, it's just going to look like one glob, you know what I mean? That's why <clears throat> with people that are, you know, that, that they want to do that, you know, that are racist or just think, you know, that are, you know how it is, um, that are racist. Um, me as a painter, I'm just going to say, you can't get any other, you can't get white without black. You just can't. You need that black outline. You need that shadow that only that color can provide. But enough of that. Anyway, um. I did the um, colors side by side. That's another technique that they try to use. Another thing that Impressionists like to do is what's called painting impasto. When you paint impasto, you take the paint itself and you directly put it on the canvas. Or you at least take it and apply it to the canvas if you're a paint for us. In a way that the brush strokes are clearly visible. Van Gogh was an expert in this. This dude is a genius. Um, and pastel is a fun painting technique. You just take the paint and you just apply it. And it makes it give it depth. You know what I mean? Bob Ross, I'm pretty sure, all the time, paints in pastel. And I'm pretty sure you could just stand back for a second. And you'll notice... Hey, look at this. I can see the brush strokes. That's why they did it. That's why the Impressionists like that movement. They like the way that the brush strokes looked. They really wanted to get that thickness. And if you look at it, it, it makes the painting look thick. You know what I mean? It makes it look, look good. Now, keep in mind that what I did here is... And I used acrylic paint. I'm not an oil painter. Um, I tried oil once. I, I didn't dig it. It just wasn't something that was for me, you know. I, it it ate up my paintbrush. Um, when I tried to use in my own, when I tried to use um, it that one time for the first time, I didn't actually know that the oil couldn't be washed off. So I just took a glob of paint on the paintbrush and was like, "All right, I'm gonna wash it off," you know. And I put it in the water, and the paint wouldn't come off. And I'm sitting there bugging out. And I'm like, dude, are you serious? My brush ruined. And sure enough, my brush was ruined. <laughs> I didn't know that you really had to use turpentine in order to get that paint off. And I didn't have that. And it took a long, it take a long time to dry. And that's not me. You know what I mean? Uh, again, I'm an impatient person. So when I do something, I like to get it done. And get it out there and then put it up and look at it. You know what I mean? It took me about, it took me a day to make this. 
I think I could say it took me about maybe six hours, maybe seven, to try and get the paint there. And I just sat there and literally just brushed it, brushed it, brushed it, and flowed it wherever. And that's pretty much it. I as for a symbolism, I really don't really have a symbolism for Reverse of Scotland. The name itself, I just kind of came out of nowhere with it, and I applied it to it, and I liked it. I posted a picture of this on Instagram, and that's pretty much it.